us or just tuning in, we are happy that you are here with us today, whether online or in person. We've moved around a lot today and worn many hats, but we are now convening for a limited formal council meeting, which means that this is not a standard formal meeting. Tonight, at this portion of our meeting, the council needs to consider action on the final step in the annual budget process for the city's truth in taxation hearing, a public hearing that is required by the state. A truth in taxation hearing what happens when any of the following takes place. The city raises property taxes, institutes a property tax stabilization, or a judgment levy. Although the, formal, although the hearing is a formal step required by the state, the council is always interested in hearing from the public. Feedback from the public helps the council make decisions in future budgets or even amendments to this year's budget. However, if you've received your property tax assessment and wish to protest your property tax assessment, uh, that is, should be directed to the Salt Lake County or visit its appeals webpage. Um, that is done through the county assessor's site, uh, assessor's office. So welcome to our public meeting. Thank you again to everyone who is joining us. Uh, before we remove, move through our agenda, I want to again mention and remind everyone about our rules of decorum, which are in place to ensure our meetings move along well and to help everyone feel comfortable sharing their comments. A copy of the full rules of decorum are available at the door and our staff will post the link in Zoom. But essentially, please be respectful of each other's comments, no clapping, cheering, or otherwise um, while it's not your turn to speak. And then we will now begin our truth and taxation public hearing for fiscal year 2022-23. If you would like to comment on today's public hearing, we are accepting those both in person and online on Zoom. The council has been informed of accommodation requests during public comment tonight, and we welcome all comments from all constituents. If you need to speak with our staff, please select Isaac Canedo from the list of participants. If you need to, you can also raise your hand in the Zoom window to indicate that you need something from the host. Taylor Hill, another staff member, will be calling those who wish to comment based on the order we received the names. Um, if you are on Zoom, please unmute your mic when Taylor calls your name. That brings us to item one, which is our truth and taxation hearing. Before we begin taking public comments, Ben Ludke, Council Policy Staff Analyst, will give us a short introduction as to what this item, what these comments are related to. Go ahead, Ben. This public hearing is the final step in the council's process outlined in state code, commonly referred to as truth and taxation. This process is required by law for this fiscal year because the budgets for the city and the library adopted by the council in June both included judgment levies, which are technically a one-time, one-year property tax increase. Public hearings on those fiscal year 24 annual budgets were held on May 16th and June 6th of this year, prior to the council adoption of the budgets on June 13th. Today, this is a separate public hearing required by state law and is specific to the property tax revenue proposed to be received by the city. For general information, City departments were discussed in detail at each of the Council's work sessions in May and June. Recordings of those discussions are available online on the Council's website, as are the staff analysis of each department. More information can be found at tinyurl.com forward slash slcfy24. At the conclusion of the hearing, the council has the option of adopting the rates for both the city and library as advertised, or it could elect to adopt a rate less but not greater than the rates proposed and advertised. If the council adopts a lesser rate, then it would need to rebalance the budget so that revenues are balanced with expenditures. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ben. Taylor, please start with our first public comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There are three people registered. The first will be Bob Barr, followed by Mayate Bastida, and then Michael Valdez. Bob is here in person. Um, my issue is a, 
I, I guess, a question. The city has posted in the paper a notice of a proposed tax increase based on what appears to be an overtaxation that is being refunded due to a lawsuit. Uh, none of you are familiar with it. A one-time tax levy to pay for a final and unappealable judgment or order to refund property tax to a taxpayer. Uh, one is from the city, the other is the library, which I assume received tax based on this. My reading of this is that someone in the city uh, inappropriately taxed, and I don't know if it's a single individual, I tried to get information on this, couldn't find a thing, but if they taxed the individual and the individual paid it, it went into the city coffers, so I would assume that you would be able to refund from that. Why are we being taxed as taxpayers to refund what you have collected apparently, and I'm not speaking to you individually, but the city inappropriately had in their, you have in your, your ta collected taxes, why aren't you refunding it from there? Why are we being taxed to make up for that mistake and who made the mistake and what's happened to them? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is not a forum where we publicly respond to questions, but that's a super reasonable question to have. And there's an answer. So I'll ask that Ben get with you to help answer that. If Actually, Mr. Chair, can we just as a do it for the yeah, because I think probably oh, okay. multiple people have the same question. Um, so so um, is it appropriate for us to suspend the rules and ask Ben to help walk through what a judgment levy is because that's a super reasonable reading of the words that are very confusing to understand and we still don't like Ben please so the refund is not to a, a private uh, individual or business the refund is to the city and to the library so when a property owner successfully appeals their property tax bill which is done through the county assessor as you mentioned during the intro that is revenue that is not paid to the city or to the library that was due in the previous year. So the judgment levy is a one-time increase to property taxes across the city in order to make up refund to the city that lost revenue from successful appeals. So if I could make, oh sorry, go ahead, Councilman Warren. And this is all, uh, this is state law. This is state law. And it's not just the city and the library. Each taxing entity could go through this process depending on the appeals that are successful. Right, okay. Because um, I, I just want to make clear that, like, it's not that there was a mistake. It's that uh, that people have the right to contest or challenge the tax assessment of their property. And when they do that successfully and and prove that their property tax should be lower, have to find a way to make up for that lost revenue because it's already been spent. It's already been budgeted. It's already uh, been budgeted. It, it, it is yeah. accounted for in this, the adopted budget, correct. The, the process is laid out in state law, and since it's handled at the county level, the list of those property tax appeals is I believe public information, but the county would have those records. Right, right, yeah. And so this is like an assessment that a different government is making that that we have to true up every year um, because we don't know how many people are going to appeal there and challenge it, and we don't know how much. There's no way to know how much it's going to vary depending on the value of the property and how many people do it and how much it's off and all that thing, all that, correct? Correct. Okay. We don't find out until early to mid-June each year, which is near the end of our budget process. Thank so you. I, um, 
And I think it's fair to say that w this happens every year, that at least some amount of property owners will contest that they were assessed too high of a tax rate mm -hmm. and will be successful and will therefore pay less money to any taxing entity. And it's all the taxing entities a th right to assess the judgment levy, which basically says we were short $500,000 this year. I don't know what the amount is, but $500,000 this year, we're going to just spread that evenly throughout everybody. So everyone like it's hard because we're not, the tax rate is not set by the city. The tax amount is set by the city and the tax rate is populated by the tax commission. Mm -hmm. Am I saying that all correctly? Correct. The council adopts the budget and then the rate changes based on the amount of budget revenue that the council adopts in the budget. So yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. so Mr. Chair. To, okay. Councilmember Pui. Yeah, I just wanted to add a, a, an extra piece, and I think it was mentioned here, but w w the city doesn't uh, appraise value of property. Uh, it is the county who does that. Um, so when someone, uh, you know, myself, I got my property tax evaluation for, from the county very recently. Uh, I think it was like last week. Uh, if And that is what is used to base, is used to appraise your taxes. Uh, so... Uh, I have a process in that bill to reach out to the county, uh, as, you know, assessor, and to, to appeal the process to uh, to the the county council and the the board of the equalization in there and whatnot. And so, and that's why this process is a little convoluted. And I understand why there is so much confusion about it. I hope we provided some. I would be not. I would not be surprised if there are still questions. So mm -hmm. we have staff members that can help walk. <laughs> constituents through this if they are oh councilmember warden just one more question ben so it we are not uh here because the council is proposing to increase property taxes for everyone in the city this is not an ongoing property tax rate increase this is a one year one time increase to make up for that shortfall right okay thank you all right let's get back to our public hearing. Uh, Taylor, will you please call the second name? Next, we will hear from Mayate Bastida and then Jim DeSanti. Mayate is here in person. Hello, I'm not sure if uh, maybe I understood the previous um, question. So I've been living for several years in the same place and uh, yes, recently kind of uh, got interested in my neighbor's taxes. <laughs> and uh, I would like to know how come properties that are across my house and size of my house, larger than mine, more luxury, has have less taxes than mine. And I would like to know based on what uh, we are taxed and where can I find out this information? Because when I find out about it, um, I have curly hair and I almost straight my hair <laughs> because it's a big difference of hundreds of dollars, the difference when, like I said, the difference in the properties is huge when they are bigger and paying less and I have to pay so much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll follow up with an answer. And next will be Jim DeSanti, who is here in person. Good evening, Council. Um, one question I wanted to ask you is, in any of the districts, are the taxes being lowered on the homes? Yes or no? I, I'd like an answer. I'm sorry, we, we can't do that here, but we can you follow can't? up with you after. It's, isn't taxes public record, Darren? It's public record, yes? Correct? This is not a conversation or a dialogue. This is you giving us comment. I'm asking you a question. Are I'm not going to answer your question. Please continue your comment. Um, I'm protesting my taxes at 931 South, 700 East. And I see a lot of uh, deception taking place on the tax levy, OK, for our taxes. I want you to know that, Darren. How long have you how how long have you been in office? Huh. 
I'll take care of this later. Thank you. Taylor, please move to the next comment. That was the final registered commenter. Is there anyone else here in person that would like to comment to this item? <laughs> okay, seeing none, I will look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move the council close the public hearing and adopt an ordinance establishing the final tax, final rate of tax levy, including the final levy for the library fund upon all real and personal property within Salt Lake City, made taxable by law for fiscal year 2023 to 2024, and ratified the budget as adopted by the council in June. Second. A motion from Councilmember Dugan, a second from Councilmember Wharton. Is there any discussion to this motion? Um, all right. Seeing uh, none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. So that motion passes unanimously with all seven council members present, one online. That's correct. And that concludes our limited formal city council meeting, and the meeting now stands adjourned. 716.